Uh, and in many countries, um, we don't have any uh, legal regulation according to, this, uh, to these orders. The other problem is loss of places of recreation. Uh, this has place mainly in coastal areas because of the pollution, uh, biological pollution of water. Um, another is high cost of drinking water conditioning and also infections, diseases and aller allergies connected with, uh, with um, liquid manure uh, management. Uh, we have also soil degradation caused mainly because of the over fertilization which also has uh, place in many cases uh, in, in, uh, in uh, industrial farms. And very serious problem is also localization of industrial animal farms near on or uh, on the Natur Natura 2000 sites and the nitrate vulnerable zones about which I will speak a little bit uh, uh, later. Um, here, well, I will give you also some, some, some picture to show um, how looks the situation with, with the industrial farms, let's say, uh, on field. And those will be mainly pictures from Poland, because this, this situation I know the best. Uh, here we have, uh, we have um, the blood and carcasses uh, which were spread on the field of one of the biggest industrial animal uh, farm owner in Poland. Uh, and it was made uh, during the winter period uh, on snow covered land. So in the situation when, when it is totally prohibited, um, well, totally prohibited is, spread, is in its spreading fertilizer then, not, not saying about uh, blood and carcasses. This situation uh, took place in the January 2009. And then we have some legal problems connected with uh, large-scale uh, animal farms. And in my opinion, the, most, the biggest problem is uh, lack of, uh, even not full, but just lack of implementation, total, total lack of implementation of revisit Annex 3 of uh, the Helsinki Convention. Um, I will also speak about that a little bit uh, later. There, is also, there are also problems with uh, transpos transposition of some legal acts into the, um, uh, into the country's legislation. Uh, lack of public access to environmental information about the um, industrial farms. Um, this situation uh, is case um, maybe mostly in Poland, for Poland and Estonia. We have very fresh case um, um, connected with those two countries. Um, well, mainly um, European Union starts some, um, let's say, explaining procedure connected with uh, lack of detailed information about uh, industrial farms uh, in official registers, database of those farms in Estonia and in Poland. Uh, this is also very serious problem um, uh, from Aarhus Convention point of view, which uh, ensure the access uh, to public uh, inf information for, uh, for the citizens. The other problem is lack of national registers of IPPC farms. Yeah, so even if the country have such register, because it's obligated to have it, uh, in many cases, like I said, in Estonia also, those registers are not complete. Uh, and lack of other regulation. Well, also quite unpleasant situation from Poland in one of uh, in very modern and big industrial farm. In 2005, um, um, we found, uh, and in our, in, and in and later also, uh, we found um, a lot of dead animals in the uh, in the uh, manure lagoon. Uh, and it's also very often problem in Poland when manure lagoons are treated like, um, like just place for all waste from farm. 
Okay, so now I would like to focus more on, on just eutrophization, uh, which, uh, as I said, is one of the biggest environmental problems connected with industrial farms. Uh, uh, the directive uh, concerning urban wastewater treatment gave us uh, quite detailed uh, the definition of eutrophization, and, uh, which is defined as enrichment of water by nutrients, especially compounds of nitrogen and or phosphorus, causing an accelerated growth, uh, growth of algae and higher forms of plant life to produce an unders uh, undesirable uh, disturbance to the balance of organism present in the water and to the quality of the water concerned. Uh, in other words, the eutrophization is over fertilization of waters, yeah, inland waters and also sea waters. Um, and actually the eutrophization of sea waters is just a consequence of eutrophization of inland waters because through those inland waters uh, nitrogen and phosphorus uh, run uh, to the Baltic Sea. Well, it's quite serious problem, mainly connected like uh, you can see on this picture with uh, algae's blooms uh, in some part of years. And Algae uh, blooms are just one of example of um, of um, um, of the problems connected with eutrophization. The other uh, are, of course, nutrient enrichment, increased nutrient concentration in the in the in the seawaters, uh, increase in phytoplankton primary production, growth of short life macroalgae. Uh, turbidity in the water, uh, which means decrease in light penetration, uh, also reduced colonization, depth of macroalgae and seagrasses, uh, changes in dominance of various species groups, uh, increased sedimentation of organic matter to the seabed, which is connected with uh, creation of anoxin uh, deserts in the seabed, oxygen depletion in sediments and bottom water, uh, and also loss in benthic uh, bottom animals, which include fish. Like I said, uh, like, let's say the most visible uh, um, problem connected with sea eutrophization is uh, algal blooms. Um, and in this picture you can see how the problem create and, and uh, how does it look uh, in all over the year. So, um, just very shortly, um, when we start in winter, uh, in winter the sea waters are characterized by very high nutrient concentration because there is a very low level of biological activity. So this is good start for spring, for early spring, for uh, a phytoplankton bloom. Yeah, uh, so phytoplankton means those um, uh, plant algae. Uh, phytoplankton bloom causes decreasing of, decreasing of the nutrient level, uh, and then when it die, uh, it fall to the bottom. And in the bottom, organic matter consumes oxygen when decomposes. Uh, that means that we have less and less oxygen in the bottom uh, waters. Uh, this problem is all also um, mm, is also bigger because of the uh, slow water mixing below the salt water layer in the Baltic Sea. Uh, and that creates bottom anoxic deserts. Uh, then, when we go to summer, uh, uh, in, in anoxic um, environment, uh, the bottom uh, deposition of, um, of sediments uh, relays phosphorus, yeah, which, which enrich the seawaters and um, allowed for summer cyanobacteria bloom 
And then when they, when, uh, they die, they left um, a big amount of nitrogen uh, in the Baltic Sea. So that gives um, the high, con uh, high concentration of nutrients in the winter time. And the cycle is closed. Yeah, and it's uh, it's very simplified um, scheme of creation of the uh, summer and spring uh, algae blooms. But it gave very general picture, but very good picture um, of the problem.